is content king. When I first started out, everyone was like, you have to post everywhere all over the place and it's not worth it and I wanna tell you why, okay? When I first started out, I was posting hundreds of pieces of content and two things happened. Number one, I burnt out and number two, the quality of my posts went way down. Here's what happens when you try to post everywhere and be all over the place that your potential clients can see you and interact with you. Here's what happens, okay? You either have to get better at posting or you have to do more. This is just a byproduct, okay? You cannot do them both at the same time. But what happens is, right, when you're new, the algorithm gives you this boost. And they say, hey, you're new to the platform. We're going to reward you for being on the platform. So we're going to give you a lot of views. We're going to, you know, whether it's YouTube, whether it's a podcast, they want you to stay there and try to get better and better and be on the platform more. So they give you this reward system and then they dial it back a little bit. So you either have to become better at what you offer or you have to do more, right? Because doing more makes you better and being better makes you want to do it more right because you get more of a reward so what happened to me was i started posting more because i was trying to learn how to get better so the more i posted the more things i was testing and i was seeing what worked and what didn't work and, and that happened but what i really want you to focus on if you're trying to grow social media you're trying to make a show you're trying to do youtube podcast is forget about more for a little bit and just focus on being better and consistent okay when i was posting more i became inconsistent i was posting once a week then it was once every two weeks and it was once a month and i was posting like every single day multiple times a day and then i got burnt out and so i became inconsistent that's no good not only do you not improve you're not testing things out you're not finding what works but the algorithm starts to forget about you that's like hey that person's not serious right and i'm personifying a uh, algorithm here but that's basically what happens so here's what i want you to do i want you to pick one channel just one right you're not trying to be everywhere all at once if you see social media people who say oh be everywhere all at once you know why that is they're talking to people who are at a different level than you there's levels to this right so when you start out you start with one show Okay, you start with one show and that's it. You master the show before you move on. Once you have that show going, then you add a second. And the second show is really just a way to feed into the first show. And then this keeps going. So once you get really good at the second show, it's on autopilot, you add a third show. And your third show can either point back to your first show, your one show, or I can post to the second show and you can work people their way up. So what does this look like? And I actually accidentally perfectly did the colors here. <laughs> so maybe we have a YouTube video up here at the top, right? Our, our one show is a YouTube video. You start posting every single day on YouTube. You're answering people's questions. You're learning about keywords, editing, SEO, time retention, all that kind of crazy stuff. You get really good at YouTube. You have a format, you have a script, a style of YouTube video that you really like. Your second show, once you've mastered YouTube and you're getting a bunch of views and there's traction and you have momentum, then you slowly add in the second show. All that does is feed the first show. What most people do, and I'm going to warn you against this, what most people do is they try to just take the first show and put it as the second show, right? They'll, they'll use AI. They'll generate clips. If you are famous, you can get away with that. Right? And I'm actually going to show you a sneaky trick at the end of the video where you can get away with it when you're not famous. But if you're famous, it's really easy. Right, Your face becomes the hook. If you're not famous, if you're watching this video, you're probably not famous yet. If you're not famous, then it's not going to work. People just don't know you. They're not captivated by your face yet. They're like, oh, I know that person. Right? It's Taylor Swift. I know what they're going to, you know, I want to see what they want to say. So we're not there yet. So you can't do that. You have to have specifically curated content in your second show otherwise it doesn't do anything right so your your second show has to be specifically curated to the platform that you're on so if the first show is youtube the second show might be facebook and you're not just going to take a youtube video and post it to facebook that's not going to work right you might have let's say a complete how to on youtube that's a 10 minute long video on facebook you might do my top 10 tips for solving this problem and you say, hey, if you want to watch the full video, go check out our YouTube channel. Then they subscribe to the YouTube channel, and that's where they see a more consistent reoccurring show. And they tune into the YouTube channel. 
Now, there is something to be said about where your audience is and, and all that kind of stuff. We, that, that goes deeper than what we're talking about in this video. But once you know where your potential clients are, you need to be on the channel that they are. So our second show brings me to our first show, and the same thing with the third show. Once you get proficient at the first show, it's easy for you to do the second show. Then you say, how can I easily do the third show? And you're not clipping the second show into the third show. If Facebook is the second show, maybe TikTok is the third show. You have to make specific content for TikTok to drive them to your Facebook group page or fan page that then drives them to the YouTube channel. Or you make shorts on TikTok and YouTube shorts and you bring them to the YouTube channel. See how it's a back chaining effect? All right, we're not trying to do all of these at once. We're getting really good at YouTube so that we don't have to think about it anymore. Right, there's a learning curve that happens. Right, When you start out learning something, this is what happens to me all the time. When you start out learning something, you're down here, you don't know anything. You go, oh, I'm learning a lot of information. And then it kind of goes down, but then you realize how much you don't actually know. Right, so that's what happens when we start getting into anything. And so if you're going to get into YouTube, what's going to happen first is you're just going to start posting. And there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to cover on editing and all that stuff. And as you get better at it, you don't have to think about it anymore. And you realize, okay, there's a lot uh, more I could learn. I could go really deep into this, but do I really need to? And so maybe you disregard that and you just focus on what you can improve, your thumbnail, the editing, the pace, the storytelling, those types of things. And then you focus on your second show. Now, here's the trick I talked about a little earlier. How do we post all over the place? How do, how, do we, how do we get famous? How do we grab people's attention by just doing one show? Here's a pretty cool trick. So let's say you start doing your YouTube video. Okay, and I'm just using YouTube as an example. This could be a podcast, this could be a blog post, whatever it is. But we're going to use a YouTube video. Now, if you're going to do, actually, let's do this. We're going to do a live stream instead because I used YouTube already. So let's say you do a live stream. It could be on Twitch. Uh, it could be on YouTube. It could be stream. Yeah. I thought I misspelled for a second. Uh, it could be on Facebook, whatever it is. You do a live stream. And here's how I want you to do it. I want you to break it up into the sections for which pieces you want to use. So if I want to have a YouTube video out of this, a blog out of this, and some shorts out of this, I'm not just going to make a live stream and then post the whole live stream as a YouTube video. I'm not going to post the whole live stream, transcribe it, use AI writing, and make it a blog post. And I'm not going to take the live stream, snip it up using AI, and make it into shorts. That's not going to work. That's what I did, and it plummeted. My audience was like, what are you doing? We, this is not what we're interested in. It's no good. And I realized very quickly it was a bad idea, and I stopped doing it. Right? I would record a podcast and post it as a YouTube video, a blog, and shorts, and it just didn't work. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a live stream and you're going to break your time up into the amount of time required to make these things. So here's how you might do it. You might say, okay, for the first 10 minutes of the live stream, I'm going to teach a how-to. Right? I'm just going to do a how-to video. How to do XYZ, how to do XYZ. And then I'm going to do a Q&A blog post on the video I just made. And it seems, trans it seems smooth in the live stream. Oh, well, I just taught you how to do this. You're probably going to have questions. Here are my top 10 questions or the, the questions that most people answer. Or you could have people write it in the comments if it's a live stream that you have that set up for and you have a good audience watching. And so now you have the energy of a live stream. You've made a YouTube video that you can snip and maybe just add an intro later or an outro and do a little bit of editing and fancy, uh, fancy tricks if you want to. Then you have this Q&A as a blog and that answers the questions from the YouTube video that maybe... You link in the YouTube video. See how, it, again, it all ties together. We're trying to make it as efficient as possible. And then the last part of this is at the end, you might do your top 10 uh, tips. So you say, hey, if you're struggling with this, here are my top 10 tips that you could use to you know, start doing this thing. And you could either put that into the end of the YouTube video, right, as a little bonus at the end of the YouTube video, or you take it and you make shorts out of it. And then that drives people back to the YouTube video. You could also take this top 10 and make it into a blog post if you wanted to. You'd have to do more writing. It's not going to be a transcript. Uh, and the blog post should be edited and, and all that kind of stuff. Like, you don't just do it and then say, okay, here's the transcript, post it. You still have to do a little bit of work on the back end. But most of the work is done for you. So you've taken the live stream. You've made a YouTube video, a blog post, and shorts out of it. But I do not want you to do this all at once. You do not focus on the blog. You do not focus on the shorts. 
until your YouTube video is perfect from the live stream because there's going to be a learning curve as always, but there's going to be structure that you have to follow. And maybe you just keep an outline on your desk or, or, or over to the side or whatever, and you just say, okay, for 10 minutes, I'm going to teach a how-to. And I'm going to follow the structure, my organization, for a YouTube video because I want the YouTube video to do well. You're not trying to just make something to post on YouTube. That is not the way it's going to work. You have to have some type of structure, some type of system. Now, if you do not have my content calendar on how to do all of this, the link is going to be in the description. You can download a PDF training as well as a spreadsheet that shows you how to do all of this. YouTube, blog posts, podcasts, Facebook groups, communities, email marketing, all that stuff in an organized, structured system. You have to have some type of system. Otherwise, you're just making content to make content. We're trying to make content to get customers and clients so we can help transform and change their lives. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to learn more, head over to caninebusinessbuilders.com. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss another episode. And I'll see you next time.